Ta-da. Hello. Hello, everyone. We were just discussing our general thoughts on the alloy of law. And I was saying that it takes a bit of an adjustment at first to like, I wasn't quite comfortable in the, in like the Western style of it because mm. I don't, I don't read Westerns. Like I've never read Westerns. I've never really had an interest in them, but this one was good fun. No. Yeah. I definitely love the like Western kind of steampunk vibe. I, I didn't really have any expectations when I read it the first time to mm -hmm. like what it was going to be, but it took, it, I agree to definitely take a second of adjustment. Um, I will say I reread this for this vlog. I really wanted to physically read it, but my old week was very bad. So I just re-listened to the audiobook again. So I know where nothing nice. is in the book. So just as a disclaimer before we really get into it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I wish that I, as I was reading through it, I was like, man, I wish I had the audiobook because... It's a fantastic audiobook. I definitely recommend. <laughs> Um, just a second, I'm sorry. What? Can we have yes. What? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Kids are asking permission for cookies. <laughs> no place to deny them because those cookies are good. Uh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> but I wanted to hear Wayne's accents. And I was like, oh, I should have gotten the audiobook. Um, it's it, Wayne is so good. He mm. is so good, and I love that whenever you get into his head, he's not some like ridiculous bloke. He's actually really super intelligent, and you know mm -hmm. he <laughs> kind of you get to his perspective, and it's like, huh, that's not what I was thinking was going to happen here. Yeah, I'm a I'm honestly a big fan of just like the Wax and Wayne dynamic throughout the course yes. of the book. Uh, I love Marcy and Steris. You don't know a lot about Steris yet, but this is a, in my opinion, like very well rounded, good female characters. But yeah, we got Vin in the first Mistborn, but I think this is the character, the, the female characters we do get in this, which we get more as we go through the four books zone. Mm -hmm. There's only three out so far. That are very well done, so I enjoyed that. And Marisy's just that's awesome. good to know. <laughs> I I loved her. Um, I thought that her idolization of Wax and Wayne was adorable. So cute. I love <laughs> the dynamic that that gave them. It was like, yes, this is brilliant. It was it, it, yes. And it then, was so well done, and then like when. Her, her, the way she comes to terms with like they're not always like the people aren't always the same from the stories, but like she still loves them even more. I'm like, yes, good. Yes, she talks about how it like made them more human, you know, to her. Mm, for sure, I I enjoyed that. I liked the angle of her being involved in forensics, uh, mm -hmm. because it it uh, it allowed for the reader to understand that there's not really a gender barrier. Like she's, I think, I think it mentions that she is kind of like touching a glass ceiling there, but uh, you know, it's not uncommon for women to be educated or, you know, like be in sciences or things like that. So I appreciated that about her. Yes, I, I did think it was just overall very good. Um, I loved a lot of things on the book, but uh, do we want to kind of do like we were doing for Stormlight and go character by character? I don't know how we want to do this. There's a lot less in terms of like the world building and stuff for these books. And there's not mm -hmm. quite as many characters, obviously, because it's just a nice, pleasant little small book that I love it so is. much. I was so, there's not a good way for me to get my book up here. I'll just do that. Um, <laughs> I, I I loved picking up a Brandon Sanderson novel and going, yes, <laughs> yes, three hundred pages. I because even do. some of the like Warbreaker and Elantris are quite chunky even by themselves, yes, and they're they still are. and they're no comparison to these guys, which are turned sideways. So I have space on my shelf, but that's the Stormlight pile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it was definitely a relief to have those those fewer pages. I do think it's still a good idea to go character by character. I just suspect it won't take us as long as like the Stormlight Archive stuff. 
Um, and I guess maybe we should do, uh, maybe, maybe try to go non-spoiler spoiler, but I feel like, um, for me, I've kind of gotten my general thoughts out of the way and that's like the non-spoilery part for me. So if you have something non-spoiler, you'd like to. I think the thing to say just generally, if you haven't read Mistborn Era 1, there's not too many spoilers I think that we'll discuss, but there's a few characters that are like mentioned in passing from that series. So fair warning people watching. Um, also, re you should read them in their chronological order. That would make sense. You would be yeah. less confused probably. Um, I think non-spoilery, all I have left is, this was another five out of five for me from Miranda Sanderson. Um, mm -hmm. Loved it, I loved the pacing of the book and um, characters were awesome. I, I dug the way they like incorporated the Alamancy with the guns and stuff, that was very cool. Um, yes. But we can obviously get more into that, but I think that's about all I have non-spoilery. If people are here, they should just assume we're gonna talk about the full of the full thing of the, not the book. Yeah, yeah, that's kind <laughs> of that's where I am. We're not good at non spoilers. Um, yeah. So, so we meet we meet Wax first, and mm -hmm. we see him with Lessie, and they're very fun together. And then that is over very quickly. Uh, and it and kind of. It was it was weird for me because I had expected this serial killer or whoever they were after in the beginning to end up like coming being more relevant, but it ended up just being that that was. I think it's a plot point for his like PTSD that he has later, kind of thing. Unfortunately, yeah, yeah. Um, and and I'll say that whenever Miles turned out to be the villain, I was kind of like, yeah, okay, like, fine. <laughs> I don't guess I really care, but that's not where I thought this was going. Um, and at the very end, you find out he's not the main villain, which is the villain that will yeah. carry on for the which we'll get to when we get there. But right, yeah, it ends up being a much bigger picture type thing than I think Wax was used to dealing with out in the roughs because out in the roughs, you know, you got, you get rid of the bad guy. Uh, and you go get a new bad guy. To go and get you go get a new bad guy. And whenever he, you know, it's a little more seedy uh, once he gets to the city. And I liked how they played on that, how they play on uh, the fact that once you start bringing in the politicians and the governments and all this stuff, it starts to become very layered and very, uh, and I, yes, exactly. Deep. And I like that Marcy <laughs> Marcy pointed out that like the roughs are these bad, dangerous place, but like they have so much more like their quality their quality of like police protection out there versus like in the city when there's and all the crime is a lot more like you were saying layered and mm -hmm. seedy. And there's a lot more that meets the eye or than meets the eye at least initially. So right, um, I I was. Conf I'm still confused. I have a theory that maybe belongs more at the end of the discussion. Uh, I mean, we can start with theor theories now. Why not mix it up? <laughs> okay. So then Wax wax shoots and uh, goes wide. Like, he goes wrong. And, and you know, it's like the, mis the, the bullet went the wrong way. And I have to wonder if um, if the person who had her, I can't remember the name of like this big baddie that they were after. Had Carson or something? I, I literally yeah. just finished the book like an hour ago. Uh, it was the guy that was part cool off. That was holding her? Was, yeah. Marcy? Well, or are we talking about the beginning? I'm talking about the beginning with okay. Leslie because, um, hmm. because the the bullet went weird. Um, yeah. Yeah, and because he, he's like, well, how did that happen? It shouldn't have happened that way. And, you know, they've done this a million times. And I was still, at the end of the book, I was like, but why did it go weird? And I'm thinking it might have been one of those time bubble thingies, but they mm -hmm. don't ever touch on it. So I, I'm kind of wondering if they talk about that more in the later books or if that's just an assumption you're supposed to reach or if it's supposed to just be some weird happenstance where he just happened to do it wrong that time. But that, I, that was something I think, for me I think that I was like, well, that was weird. So it's been a hot minute since I've read these, but I, as far as I remember, it does come full circle and it does, it's not something okay. that just like is left open-ended, so. Okay, all right. Yeah, because I did have to wonder about that for sure. Um, 
Oh. Someone just dropped something upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> um. But I, I think on the on the the note of wax, while we're here, because mm -hmm. we met him first, we might as well talk about him first. Um, I think he's an interesting character overall. I, he like in it, Wayne obviously has my whole heart, but so does Waxillian Ladrian. I gotta say the whole name at least once. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love them both. Like the friendship is cool and uh, good fun, but I like that he kind of has to. He's trying because of like the people around him when he does return back in the city after. Leslie to like, he goes through like a, I'm not gonna give up this thing. And he's like, well, maybe I should give it up, give this mm -hmm. thing up, this whole like lawmaking because I clearly am not okay after what happened. So he gives it up and then all of a sudden he's like, JK, the world needs me again. Um, but, I, but I do like how Brandon Sanderson like brings it all like, it's very, it's done very smoothly. And I think it is like a good like representation of someone like going, recovering from trauma before they can like, handle the situation again maybe mm -hmm. um, yeah. and it takes people like really being in danger for him to be like okay I, no I can do this I need to do this like no one else is going to do it besides me kind of thing so I just thought that was an interesting thing and then we get the like major plot of the book <laughs> um yeah so the thing I, I am always a sucker for someone being pulled back in to, you know, the thing that they first discovered was like really their wheelhouse. And then they've left that mm -hmm. behind. I'm always a sucker for somebody getting drugged back in kind of yep. like, <clears throat> you know, with Teft or Zoyal in the Stormlight Archive, you know, they're two of my favorite characters because they're both like, damn, getting roped into this crap again, you know? <laughs> And yeah. Wax takes it very gracefully. He does. Uh, and I love that Wayne is there to like, hey. Be like, come on, you come need on. to do something. <laughs> yeah, he's like kind of like the little devil on his shoulder, you know. <laughs> like, you know, you wanna. Uh, and these people really need you. <laughs> yeah, and then so that kind of plays into their dynamic, um, which I really appreciate. Uh, I found it interesting how they mixed the powers, like how, uh, what is it? Is there like the twinborn? Twinborn. Twin born. Yeah. Um, I thought that was really cool. I got a little bit tripped up though, because I could get, I didn't quite remember like the, the allomancy I had down pretty good, but the Faruka me, I was like, but wait, what did that do again? Like we didn't get into that until like the second book. And then the third book was a shit show. And I don't remember <laughs> the Faruka me really. So, uh, I think you're supposed to still be kind of confused about that. You do get a lot more backstory because you get like a Wayne flashback to him as a, sorry, not Wayne, Wax flashback to him as a child. And it's really cool because you really get to actually get into that magic because in, in Mistborn Era 1, you kind of like, you only see like Sazed's character and mm -hmm. there's not a lot of info and he only does the one thing. So just wait, you will be... There will, will be more clarity that comes. <laughs> okay, okay. Because cool. I, I think you're kind of being like, how does this, you're supposed to, as a reader, I think, be like, how the heck is this working? Also, just a note about the audiobook. It doesn't come over pronounced Farukemi. So the first time I opened up Mistborn, I was like, what the heck is going on? Because it's pronounced like Farukemi almost, with like a TH kind of sound in the audio. Okay. So just a note, if you have it, th there will be, which I, I I guess it probably is an F sound, but my brain just didn't compute that. So he does kind of like it's a it's a weird um like the vowel is kind of pronounced in a different way. I do remember mm -hmm. that about the audiobook for Mistborn Era One, where it was like Feru Kemi or so you know, like it's a different sort of pronunciation. So yeah. Um but yeah, so the first time I opened the Mistborn, because I was I had listened to the audio for Mistborn one, and um, by the time I finished out all the books, because I, I just like ordered all of them from Europe, mm -hmm. it was great. <laughs> um, I was like, oh, Sammy actually read. sent me these. She I bought know. them, bought them for me from our friend who has a small bookshop, or not a physical shop, but she runs like a bookstore. Um, That's so fun. Yeah, over in the UK. So it's That's she's. 
I always like getting books from her because I'm like, I'm going to get the UK cover. <laughs> woo, woo, woo. Um, and I, I, I do like the UK cover for all of them, except for Stormlight Archive. I can't point my hand because I'm backwards. Stormlight Archive, yeah. I, I like the American covers. Where I still didn't point correctly, but. Um, so when I, I tried to read, um, I think it's Well of Ascension, I was like, nah, I'm going to listen to the audio. <laughs> but. Yeah. Um, I. I don't, I don't know which covers I like better. Um, I think the white books are pretty, but I like um, how personal to the character the other the, the U.S. books are. Like you can see mm -hmm. uh, then on the cover of Mistborn One, um, and then like I don't even really know who's supposed to be on the cover here <laughs> but but yeah i mean the the white ones are pretty to each their own anyways that was i digress sorry <laughs> that's okay um, um but yeah you you won't be lost in the wind about the how the twin born thing works and okay you do learn a lot more about the magic but i think the point is in the mistborn original trilogy that they're such a suppressed, like, slave, enslaved population that, like, they don't even know everything about the magic anymore. So, okay. when the society is reborn kind of thing, they have a freedom yeah. to, like, really get back into it. <laughs> All right. I see. I see. Okay. Um, let's see. There was something specific that popped into my brain that's gone now, I guess. <laughs> uh, oh. You mentioned the Coloss, and that was something that I was like, oh, how are they going to be, like, because I would have thought that that would be something that wasn't really happening anymore after uh, Miss Point every, one. Clearly, I was, clearly I'm wrong, because <laughs> it's there. Every, every, everyone's interbreeding, apparently, which is good diversity and things, but also I'm like, they work like humongous, and how does that work? I'm like, kind of monsters and also like six humans and one like well because <laughs> what like, is going in Mistborn on? era one the coloss are like you know when Vin finds out that they used to be humans mm -hmm. uh you know and it was just the spikes that were like bringing them back to life or something so I'm like how do coloss breed it, I, and, yes <laughs> like and then also is is would uh do they still like grow? Do they? I'm confused. <laughs> I'm confused about. I'm Coloss, honestly still but... confused on. I'm honestly still confused on that. I don't know if we. I don't remember because it's been a minute. If we get more info on that, but I think it's an interesting choice and direction, at least for the first one. I'm like, huh? Yeah. How do you work? I assume we get more information at some point, but okay. I don't remember for sure if we get it. For me, as I was going through the book, I'm like, when are we like? I, I need to understand. Um, so we talked a little bit about Wax. I feel like we need to talk a little bit more about Wayne. Um, oh, for sure. Because I really loved his backstory. It was very, un, it was not an expected backstory. It was classic enough, but it wasn't cliche. Um, and I like that he he like he's already had a redemption arc so like we're we're watching him post redemption mm -hmm. and it's it's really fun uh and the fact that he still sends things to the family and mm -hmm. you know it was like oh wayne <laughs> i love you yeah. You're so sweet. No, yeah, he's just a good egg through and through, no question about it. And um, I love his character in this book. I, I think we definitely are still learning about him, but I, I do enjoy the like post uh, arc thing because that's not something you really get because like when the arc is over, the book is over, kind of thing. Right. So he's yeah. like in his in his best life already, and I'm just like, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, bro, you get it. I am excited to see where you go still because there's still growth, obviously. Yes. One yes. does not stop growing. <laughs> One does not stop growing in a Brandon Sanderson novel. Oh, you there know. you go. That, that'll work. Come on. You know, you want to cooperate. Don't fall. It's going to fall. But that's fine. Ta da! Ta da! 
I'm just like looking went... at my camera, like, how do I get it up there? Um, there <laughs> I keep covering it with my very large hair. <laughs> um, I have my hair covered because it's, I'm trying to grow it out. It's a whole thing. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I have enough hair for both of us, I think. So, and it's not, <laughs> it's normally more curly than this. So it's, I went, I went walking and it's very humid. So, oh, um, yeah, the, that does it in every time. Oh, for sure. Um, I think I think also to note on Wax is I just love his humor. He's very much a comic relief element to the story. Wayne and or Wax? I meant to say Wayne, sorry. Wayne, that's okay. Wayne, Wayne. Wax, you know, is, Wax is very clever and funny too, but I was I was like, I don't think he's the one, but yeah. The comic relief is definitely Wayne. Uh, yes. They're both funny and I, I enjoy the humor because like, yeah, there's dark stuff in the book, but a lot of Brandon Sanders books get real dark real fast and there's just not a lot of light at the tunnel. Like mm -hmm. this one's a this one's definitely like off to a lighter start at least. Yeah. Um, I still need the fourth book to come out to see if it finishes that way, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll, we'll see that um, about that later. But uh, yeah, he's very funny. He's uh, a good time. And he's basically just trying to be like the best person he can for his friends. And I love that. Like, I just yeah. love it. Yeah. I love that he had the lucky hat. I, just, I, don't, I don't know why, but that's one of those things that I'm like, yes, I can't wait to see what they're willing to do for the lucky hat. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Jack Sparrow always went back for his hat. It was like, yes, I'm happy to mm -hmm. see this. Um, and then I also liked how, I liked that, that Wayne uses his ability to manipulate time to change into different people and just seeing him do that was it was so fun and the fact that he like gives each one of those things like a, a character and he gives it a specific accent because he gives it a backstory and it's just like that's like I, li I like where your head is at man and I really appreciate the effort you are going every single time like no right there is not a time he does not put in all of the effort necessary which is why he's successful as a like kind of sneaky character yeah. <laughs> when he needs yeah. to be when all over the force of around as the old lady it was like this is brilliant this is so funny uh mm -hmm. and then d d messes with the captain because he goes in with you know he's like how would you heard of me i'm this person this person it was good I liked his espionage. Like, I liked his scene in the jail also when he's like um, interrogating the people, but also getting them to tell him things because he's like not he's like also not interrogating them. Yeah, I like. But then he also he, still helps the kid like have a better yes. life. He's like he's like please don't do this, child. You're ruining your life. You have chance for redemption. You young I, one. I remember loving that a lot, but then putting that together with his own redemption arc was like, oh yay, he's doing the good things. Passing it forward for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, he was he was very fun to watch do that, and I'm glad that I'm glad that there was that amount of creativity to uh, his abilities because it would have been very easy to just leave it as oh this is a good combat thing you know because he can just be one on one with somebody. Um, but that, I think that was a very clever manipulation of the of the twin born abilities. Oh, for sure. Is he twin born or is he just a... Uh... Oh, no, yeah, he... twin born. Yeah, 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 you're right. I forgot the like, time bubble is not the... The healing is the ferrochemy and the time yeah. bubble thing, which was what oh, the metal I forget is um, the alamancy. Bend, bend alloy. Yeah. He, which I'm not sure which one that is. That might have been one of the new metals that they discovered at the end. I've never once read any of the glossaries that Brandon Sanderson puts together, like with what all the magic is. Like he like has a whole thing. I'm like, I'm never going to actually read that. We're going to just hope I remember. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, I also liked how whenever he would use up some of his healing, he would just like, he would walk around with the sniffles. <laughs> like he'd sneeze or cough, you know, mm -hmm. was like that's, I love that. That's great. It's really putting in the extra effort, like like we've already said. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, who's next, Marisy 
Mar yeah, uh, I don't know. Is it Maracy or Maracy? How do they Maracy do it in the is audiobook? how the audiobook <laughs> is Maracy. Maracy, okay. Um, yeah, I liked Maracy a lot. She, uh, I really, I, to find out that she was the sister was a little weird. Like, I definitely didn't follow Wax's train of thought on that one whenever he said it. And she was like, yeah, I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. Um, <laughs> they, they, they didn't walk it back and show, like, the little, like, reactions to certain things. And I'm like, ah, I see. Yeah. Which is why she was, like, kind of always around. Which is like, if you were just a cousin, like, would you really live with them? Like, is that a thing you would actually do? It's like, oh, this makes more sense. You are the bastard. Yes. Oof. But whatever the Oops. female version is of that, because that's usually g male gendered for some I reason. Just, I think it's just bastard child. I ended up looking that up at one point. Um, <laughs> Good but to yeah, know. a woman can be a bastard too. <laughs> hey, anybody can be a bastard if you try. <laughs> right. We're, I feel like we're endorsing that for some reason. Anyways, it's <laughs> um, a butchery. Uh, yeah, she was. <clears throat> she was so smart, and it was so fun. It, it was a very, again, a very classic Western dynamic that was done well because she wasn't some simpering little maiden. You know, she she picks up a, a rifle and goes to work too. And it was like, well, damn. I, I do fun. like I do <laughs> like that we get like her and Renette kind of as like juxtaposing. Like they're both like strong, independent women, but like. I, I like that we get to see Maris. He's like, yeah, I like the skirts and stuff and like being frilly and being girly because that's also okay. But she's also still like tough in her own right, for sure. Yeah. And then Renette's like just a, a badass through and through, which, and, and I'm not saying Maris not, but she's, um, Renette's thinking like, but I'm going to wear pants or I'm, Maris is like, I can still be a badass while wearing a dress. I'm like, yes, yes. queen. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, I, I liked that too. Um, we didn't have any like, not like the other girls type tropey things that you know are annoying uh but, but yeah, yeah i think it's really cool that we get to kind of see her as like the university student who just wants to hang out with her heroes to be like i'm actually gonna help and you can't get rid of me now and then we get to see her at the end she's like i'm a judge and hanging out with the constables like actually making a difference yes <laughs> i loved that i loved getting to the end and seeing that she was you know in the weeds with it and i was like yes this is gonna be so good for book two like i'm <laughs> ready uh, sure. and and i liked seeing one of the things that i liked seeing overall in the book and maracy kind of gives us the maracy Give, I've like Maracy. Maracy the whole time in my head, so it's gonna take it's, me forever. Um, it's okay, <laughs> but Maracy uh, kind of gives us this, and Wax does too, but gives us this idea of like what society looks like. And there was there were several times where I was like, "Oh, Ellen would be so proud! Like he would be so happy!" <laughs> oh, Ellen! Oh goodness! <laughs> yes. The city um, is Ellendale, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah, I, I, Sammy said that Vin gets a lot of things too, and I did see her in some stuff, but I wish that she would have been more in it. Um, this a way. More obvious, I think. So. This way. Okay. All right. We do have the Church of the Survivor also, just, mm -hmm. which is Senor, uh, what's his name? Kelsier, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My brain did not work there for a second. Oh, snap. Okay, so we're talking about Maracy, Maracy and we're talking about the, the end uh, there with when she sees Iron Eyes. And I love that Iron Eyes is like the, like he's almost like a Hades character, like, uh, you know, like the Grim Reaper sort of thing. And mm -hmm. then we got to the end and I was like, oh, Marsh is still alive. <laughs> Yeah, that was that. That was an exciting thing for me, for sure. I was um, like, "Oh my god, that's amazing!" <laughs> <laughs> for sure, because I, I, I did. I did like that we got to see him again. And I remember when I read it the first time, I was like, "Oh my god!" Because I had just finished reading the. I basically went like all of the audiobooks one after the other for like the, the six that are out of the Mistborn books and Warbreaker. I actually shoved in the middle just for like a brief respite, but like. It was all so fresh when I read the first time. I'm like, Marsh is still alive. 
I forgot his name by the, this this read. I'm like, so I was like, thank you for saying Marsh because I forgot his name. <laughs> yes, I loved I loved seeing Marsh. Um, I thought that was really fun, and I liked I really really liked whenever Wax is in this showdown with uh, Miles, mm -hmm. and Harmony comes in, and I'm just like. Yes, so sad. You know, and he's like, he looks over, he sees his trunk. So I was like, you're welcome. It's like, of course. He's like, I sent you. Didn't you know that, you fool? It's like, I don't know if I should be doing this. We you should have sent more help. I sent them you. I'm like, it's like and obviously. Like, and, and here is your beautiful trunk that you've been looking for. Yes, yes. And all your guns. His, I love that his religion is just to be spiritual in whatever way makes the most sense to you. I love that we see Sazed's religious conclusions come mm -hmm. full circle um, the way that they did. That was very, very it's like, satisfying. It's like be intentional with whatever you're feeling like religion is today. Like, <laughs> yep. And yep. talk to your God when you put on the earring because that's how this shit works in this universe. <laughs> right, yeah. It, it made me wonder if uh, the earring... Well, no, because he wasn't wearing the earring whenever he was, like, so it wouldn't be a direct connection, necessarily. It's just that, like, the mindfulness thing, yeah. Anyway. No, he, he, put, he put the earring in for the whole, like, last sequence with the fight. And oh, stuff. did just, he? Yeah, he did. He put it in before. He's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need the wisdom today, kind of thing. Oh, you're like right. That. You're mm -hmm. right. Yes. Okay, I remember that. So maybe that is, it's like a weird connection type deal uh, directly with that's cool. I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. It's a, it, it's, a, it's a nice, like, again, I'm going to use the word juxtaposition, about, I guess, in this video. It's a nice juxtaposition of, like, how the earring and, like, the talking to the gods was, like, very evil in the first series. And, like, mm -hmm. and then bless as and he's like this is how you're gonna talk to me who's just like here to be harmony i'm like yes i like this much more <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i really like that um i will be curious to see what else they do with marisi's allomancy and mm -hmm. i'm very curious to know what steris's allomancy looks like or she has allomancy <laughs> like i know that she's descendant but it's like how 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 good is the girl? You know, like is she? How cool? How cool? Do you have any thoughts? initials? Because I know Star Staris isn't a huge part in this book, but do you have any initial thoughts on her? Uh, I know initials... where she goes, so I'm like, I'm not gonna <laughs> say anything. So initially, I was like, who's like, get out of here! This is new. I don't even want this chick here. She got kidnapped. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. I want to hang out with Marcy anyway. So, mm -hmm. but then, you know, we get to the, to the end and we get to see like a little more of her and we start to understand why she thinks the way that she does about marriage in particular. Um, and I think, I think her cynicism is going to work well with wax, but I don't <laughs> think I'm happy about them being an idol. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm not, I don't want to ship them, like, but I think that they would be cool friends. Like, she's going <laughs> to be a good member of the team, you know, but. She I has a much bigger role in the next book, and I'll I'll ask you the same question next, after we finish the next one. But yeah. I, I, I agree, there's not a lot to her in this book. It's interesting, because we, we get, like, the very harsh view of, like, why she is the way she is at the beginning, and then we jump to the end after knowing all this other information. Like, okay, I kind of get you more now. You also didn't panic too bad when uh, your future husband threw you out of a window via a rifle. <laughs> like, I liked that she, towards the end, like she was a little bit flushed. She was like, oh. Oh, oh. oh my goodness. Was, uh, and she's like, and then she's also I'm not like, good with people. And then she's like, she's a little bit fluttery over him now. So I'm like, maybe, maybe. you know. It's, there's definitely like slow burn to them and their journey as an item in theory at least this part because like it does like barely there like it's an it's definitely an agreement mm -hmm. on a non-romantic level but she has bigger roles and i agree that her cynicism and like they do have good friends like bud vibes so at this yeah point. <laughs> oh my gosh my kids are dropping dishes 
up. Oh man. So I have to <laughs> deal with that. You are good. I um um, but yeah, I think Steris for me is still, I'm still a little bit lukewarm on her. What is going on? Why are you guys dropping dishes everywhere? Bring it, give it to me. Give it to me. You need to quit. I understand that you're sorry, but you keep dropping it. Finish your lunch, dude. Because I can't stop dropping it. Yes, I know. <laughs> it is okay. okay. Um, right. uh, do we have? We don't really. We're not really like close to any of the constables yet. Are we kind of seeing no. a group? Um, is there any like other anybody? I liked. Um, I mean, I think it's fair to talk about Miles a little bit. Uh, okay, yeah, he's yeah, our, yeah, like our sure. main villain. Um, but yeah, I think. I'm just gonna toss this in here. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was interesting that we started off with, well, I guess our first villain was like the serial killer, right? But, you know, we saw them deal with that fairly quickly. Um, and then they come up against this person who is literally unstoppable and they stop him anyway. So, I like that he um, lent himself well to Wax and Wayne's character building in that you know, they're clearly going to be able to take on these like a bigger lot. things. Uh, and it, it gives us a place where like the ante is already pretty high um, and we're still, you know, it, the series is still being released. So it's like, man, where is it going now? Yeah, for sure. And I think it was just interesting for Miles. Because, yeah, Miles had an ulterior motive to, like, take advantage of the situation that um, Suit was putting him in. Also, we do need to talk about that. Um, but it's it's very clear, like, with how it resolves that Suit, no matter what was very heavily using Miles, and that was Miles' mm -hmm. big deal, which is why he was like, became a criminal. He's like, the system is the worst, like, all the yes. injustice, all these things, we should be in charge. But like, he, he was still so, like, obviously being used, and he wasn't going to come out well in that situation, I don't think, based on how I know the next few books go. Like, even if he had survived, like, I did think the way that they perpetually were basically. Have, getting nearly beaten down by Miles and then the re resolve where he didn't quite realize what Marisy was doing was just a super cool scene and like her mm -hmm. her Alamancy actually had powers and all of that so it was I loved that they did that I loved that she got to be a really big part of the solution because I know that like in the beginning she's like oh my Alamancy is kind of useless so we just keep it quiet and Wax and Wayne are like wait a minute no, 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 no. That's not how Alamancy works. You, there's stuff. Yeah, to everybody do. <laughs> has a power for sure, for sure. Yeah, uh, yeah. I really, I appreciated that a lot. Um, oh, we didn't really talk about Renette. Oh yeah, uh, we, yeah, Renette, and then probably Suit, and that's probably all the characters that I can think yeah, of. Yeah, I think but, that's. Uh, I think that's everybody. I think so. I, I like Renette off, off the bat. She gives me like. There's that show on Netflix where like all the men in the mining town die and the women have to like defend themselves from like this big boss criminal and like arm themselves. And also there's like Native American sh ruffles and all of that. So like gives me strong, like sh she's not going to take anything from anybody and will be the last one standing if it comes to that. <laughs> so yeah, she's definitely <laughs> a little crazy in the opposite way that uh, Wayne is. <laughs> I really loved that their first meeting with her, you know, Marisy's like, what, you know, like, sh she wouldn't really shoot, would she? And it's like, <laughs> you don't know like, her. It's like, clearly you're underestimating this person you know nothing about, which is a bad life idea or just principle. Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, and, and I like, I like that her and Wayne have this like unrequited interest Mm -hmm. going on. We don't really know um, if it's on her side at this point, but it's definitely on Wayne's right. side. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, she's, 
I think that's going to end up being very interesting. I hope we get to see that develop more, regardless mm-hmm. of which way it goes. I'm just curious to see how it is. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm not too eager to ship any. I don't think I'm ever really eager to ship any of the characters in what Brandon Sanderson's works. Because they're until all later. <laughs> yeah, well, there's that too. I really don't want him to kill my characters. I like them. <laughs> I think just something else to point out about Renette is that she's doing all this really cool research and like engineering and like building better weapons, which is just going to obviously come into play later in this world that has weapons and aluminum, which is already mm-hmm. a big, huge deal. And, yes. and um, then the bullets that she designed for specific uh, types of elements yes. and ferrochemists. So I'm definitely excited to see where, like, what else she comes up with. Um, I honestly, mm-hmm. I don't remember. So this is like a perfect time for me to reread these books because I don't remember anything. Um, well, great. <laughs> woohoo. And the audiobooks are all fairly short when you listen to them on like 1.7 speed. So. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I like her character. I think she's fun and uh, like based on the content provided, like I think she and Stairs have fairly equal page time and I like her more than Stairs in this book. <laughs> like that's about where yeah. I'm at. Um, and then we had Suit who I was, I was, I was thrown by who he ended up being, but then I was like, mm-hmm. well, but that makes sense because from the start, I was like, I don't understand, like, I don't think his uncle's actually dead. You know, that was something that I was like, eh, it feels like something that's probably going to end up being not true. Um, and then I, to find out that he's like this bigger deal was like, oh, uh oh. I, I do remember when I read it the first time, I was very like, not expecting of the like bomb scene. But I what once it happened, I was like, there's no way. And like, we hear like waxes dialogue but like there's no way that he was hired by somebody in like the six month time that my uncle was dead when he looked more mm-hmm. he only literally worked with the family i'm like huh that was like my first little like alarm bell about like ah oh, something bigger might be afoot uh <laughs> yeah yeah that was definitely a big hint too i i liked i liked that scene a lot because mm-hmm. it set up the Wax Wayne, um, Maracy trilogy, Maracy dynamic very well. Mm. Um, it is a fun thr- scene. It thrusts them for face first into like, okay, so everybody wants to kill us. We need to work together, right? Here, here yeah. we go. But yeah. yeah, suit being Wax's uncle is definitely interesting, and like that, they him being able to be like, so that's actually where all of our money went. It wasn't just thrown down the drain and mm-hmm. things like that. So very I, I was interesting. A little bit disappointed like, at the end whenever it was like it's insurance fraud, and I was like, "Woo!" <laughs> it's really not going to run to insurance fraud. Hmm. Um, what about the I, sex trafficking that seems to be happening? Also, uh, the mm-hmm. I don't remember who Miles said before he like was shot for like the fourth time at mm-hmm. the end, like in the execution scene. But um, the he's like wor- worship a, a name of a god, which mm-hmm. is important to remember because that's kind of stuff is going to happen. Obviously, with suit and it, it's definitely not just insurance fraud either. Just. There is also the sex trafficking, which we we don't quite know what that's for yet, but mm-hmm. mucho interesting. I, I was very interested in Miles's uh, like sudden conviction with a different sort of spirituality because um, you know in the scope of the Cosmere, we've seen um, Odium come in and uh, tangibly interrupt human ways of thinking uh so it made me like hmm i wonder if there's another like shard at play here who is manipulating uh or manipulated miles because he didn't seem well you know he didn't seem he was uh he he very much had his convictions but they were clearly misguided 
And I wasn't ready to chalk that all up to just him being a bad egg. Yeah, that's a good, a good, a good knowledge, like a good thing you notice for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I forget. I think it's like Renault or something like that. I'm trying to figure out who it was that he was like, remember praise Renault or something. Something like who, that. Yeah. Who I did miles from alloy of loss say to worship. Thank you, Google. <laughs> We're gonna see if Google like actually knows what I'm talking about. Um, okay, I found it. Worship Terrell, sorry. Which Trell? I don't know. Who that's right. Yeah, I remember because I read that name and I was like, wait, that's the last name of someone from Robin Hobb. And that's not the first um, kind of thing that I'm starting to wonder if it's like a tribute of sorts to Robin mm -hmm. Hobb because there's a lot of things in the Brandon Sanderson books that I'm like, hold on a second. That was also in a Robin Hobb thing. Yeah. So, uh, Trell is definitely something to like keep an eye out for. And like mm -hmm. your, your theory of like convictions maybe being like misled is interesting. Um, <laughs> not going to say anything more than that, but I think we have going into the next book, we got suit, we got, we don't, I don't think like Miles was all that Miles was. There's something else going on with him. Mm -hmm. And and then we get to see our trio out of fourth person, which is Starris to hang out a lot and do more fun things. I'm really hoping that Starris comes out of her shell. I mean, I'm expecting her to, you know, over the course of the books, but it's like, man, I need you to not be stuffy. And if you and Wax are going to get married, I'm going to need you to be more fun. Well, and like drop the and whole like, contract thing. It's like, can it actually just be romantic maybe? You know, like I'm just throwing it out there. The first <laughs> the first prenup in a um, Cosmere Universe book in Owl mm -hmm. Law. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, which, you know, you go, girl. Get, do the prenup, but it's like don't don't make the prenup, Mister Validate. <laughs> what the hell? Stop that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like even if you are stuffy, you deserve better than that, and you shouldn't be making that concession. Yeah, uh, especially not prenuptials. <laughs> Come like, on, give the guy clearly, a little bit of a chance. Yeah, and, <laughs> why, and I was like, why? She's like, wait, what? <laughs> like, I don't want to. Like, what? <laughs> I loved that. I loved that he was like, hold oh. on. Mistresses? Mm. And like, and do you get one? Like, I don't want one. Why do you? Like, what? Yeah. It's like, what do like, you I don't want one. I don't, I don't know if I want you to have one. Like, what? what's really going on here, please? Tell me. I thought I thought it was funny that she's like, I tend towards the carriage man or whatever. And I was like, <laughs> marry the carriage man. <laughs> do it here. Oh, my God. word. But um do you have a I, did you mention a rating for the book do you have one I, do you enjoy i mean it was a five I, I feel like it's an easy five the thing with me about my book ratings though is like if it's not a five or a four then i didn't like it really at all like if it's a three-star book i had to push myself through it not that i didn't dislike it or that it was a you know not that i disliked it necessarily or that it was a bad book but like i don't have to push myself through Sanderson novels. I want to read them. You know, like I want, I'm mm. excited the next time I get to pick them up. Uh, oh, so sure. that's always just like five star for me. Now, his uh, his book, Elantris, might actually be like a three star, but everything else has been five. Yeah. And Elantris might well, turn into a five if I read it, read it again, but it was like, it was not the best jumping off point. <laughs> so I read it after I had literally read everything else. So I was like, I loved it, but like, I kind of knew what I was getting into. So I, I mm -hmm. think the time and place you read things makes a difference on how it's read it. So I, Alondra's is different and interesting and it's not his best work ever, but like, it, I'm one mm -hmm. of those people that like, I don't think I would have liked Mistborn if I had started there. Right. Because I started with Stormlight because that. I'm insane. <laughs> um, <laughs> But anywho, uh, it was, I loved this book and it was, I, I did the audiobook in like four days, so that's impressive, but it was only like 11 yeah. hours and then I sped it up to like seven. So I was like, <laughs> I, 
I, I'm really curious to see where this goes. Um, I'm excited that it's, uh, that it's not just a trilogy, um, mm -hmm. because Miss Born Era One was a trilogy, and so I had it in my head for some reason that this one was um, for a, a while. And then you mentioned that there was, you know, a fourth book and things. Um, and so it, I'm excited it has, that it's he's, actually he's officially started working a on series. The book, so that's good. Nice, nice. Nice. So I think it was originally supposed to have been out in like 2020. So when I was reading it and the fourth book just wasn't out, I was like, what do you mean? I am upset. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> the third one is a big guy. So I'm very excited to see how it closes out. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I trying to pick my brain to see if there's any more like closing thoughts that I have. Uh, I really I really want to see. I really want to see the dynamic in the next book. I mean, I'm excited to see that, and I'm excited to get to know Steris, and I'm hoping that she's gonna, that I'm gonna come around to her, kind of like I ended mm -hmm. up coming around to Shalon. Uh, <laughs> I I also hope that we don't have to do too many more of those like stuffy dinner parties and stuff. I guess like we're gonna have to. Like I know it's inevitable because we're staying within in this world yeah and so like things are going to be happening like that but i'm like hmm, they're, closer like to the the, they're closer to the shoot em up vibe so <laughs> they're yeah. a little, they're, st they're still dinner parties but okay <clears throat> yeah so that's but, they're less good. like of the they're less of the ball vibe that from um this born era one but they're they're not quite as stuffy and there's usually like a intrigue element because they're trying to figure out what the heck is going on with his uncle and everything so mm-hmm yeah. Also, they do actually leave Ellendale, so you'll that'll be fun. Because you're like, they have to stay in the city. I'm like, no, they don't. <laughs> I just assumed that they were going to be staying in the city because that's where, you know, all these things are going down. Um, oh, I do have another closing thought, and that is that the uh, newspaper clippings throughout the book are very entertaining. And, you know, if you're watching this and you kind of skipped over the newsletter, the newspaper clippings. I, I didn't know there was newspaper clippings. Go back. Yeah, I've literally like never the opened this book. Stuff, they're fun. I've, I've literally never opened this book. Look, they're yeah, yeah. House tech so, you'll under the break or unveils the break knot. That's so cool. Yeah, and so <laughs> there's like nice touch. There's like <laughs> some conflict going on between like. Uh, people who run carriages and people who want cars and people who are, you know, there's like someone who's um, writing from a Colos camp and somebody who's writing politically. And it's all very, very fun. I would encourage you to go back at, because it's a, it's a, it's a great layer to the world. I'm going to have to go back. Look at this one. And <laughs> also, my, my mind has been blown. It's fine. Um, <laughs> And oh yeah, this one is cool. There's a there's cool yeah. art. <laughs> so there is, fun. There is. Yeah, so I would definitely advise doing that because there were some things in there that I was like, that's so crazy. This is hilarious. And you don't get it through the rest of the book. It's just it's in the broadsheets that Wayne is like or Wax is like sifting through and stuff. So you get to see little snippets of it. And I thought that was just genius. I loved how we that worked. Is so I like cool. how we worked it in because like with Shalon in uh, Stormlight Archive, the, the way that we get our illustrations is through Shalon and we get to see blueprints through Navani and we get all these things, like that's how he builds the pictures in. And I was curious to see how he was gonna do it with this one. And he pulled through with the broadsheets. I was like, ah, yes, chef's kiss. I really, job. And it, Great job, Brandon, it, good call. It just really adds to the character as well. Like it really sinks you into the like steampunk energy. Yes. They have printing presses, turns out. <laughs> yes, they have printing presses, and they're, they're just now starting to get cars, but people aren't happy about it. Uh, you know, there's, like, campaigning against automobiles and campaigning for, like, the, uh, it's like the Coachman's Union or something. <laughs> it's just, it was really fun. They're really fun. That is so fun. That is so fun. Um, but, yeah, I think that's all I've got. This was much shorter than our Stormlight ones, which I kind of enjoy because those get long at like two hours. <laughs> yes, they do. And they get exhausting. Uh, 
you know, not because they're not fun, but just because it's like, so, wait, my brain yeah. has to do so many things. Mm-hmm. Well, well, yeah, this was lovely. Um, we'll schedule <laughs> for the next one because I have it open because I was like, when are we reading the next book so I can be more mm-hmm. organized for this round of this reading? Um, I lost it. I don't know where it is. <laughs> I know that I know that Sammy posted the reading schedule, but I don't think did she post a live date as well? No, but I was just gonna look at the reading schedule. Um, okay. Alloy of Law. That's the one we're reading. Um, she did post it because I like opened it like a little while ago. I just don't know where it is. Uh, oh, reading. Okay, there it, it minimizes itself for some reason. So, reading schedule for Shadow of Self is May second through. Oh no, she did post a live show for like May twenty ninth okay. ish. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. So, uh, I wanted. What do you think about that? You want to do May 29th for the live show Shadow of Self? You think we can swing that? It's uh, four weeks. Yes, uh, that sounds good. And then we can figure out our uh, lovely East of Eden live show for like the week after that or something. <laughs> or yeah. whenever we finish those books because I have not started yet because my life is okay. not together. But it's right here. It's, or right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. So yeah, we've got the East of Eden discussion coming up. And then at the end of <clears throat> May, excuse me, we will be doing Shadow of Self. Uh, we are having the discussions over in the Discord. Um, yes. and we'd love to see you there. Uh, do you, I, I'll have to put a link to it in the description box, I think. So I will do that and we will see you on the next live. Don't forget to subscribe over at Casey's channel too, so that you can watch her vlogs. You did a vlog. Did you do a vlog for all the Stormlight Archive books or just Words of Radiance or? I did oh Springer specific. Okay, I technically did a okay. vlog for uh, Words of Radiance, but it was much less intensive. The one for Oathbringer I went real hard on because I was like, I need to do something. There's a dog upstairs. <laughs> um, but I, I haven't been posting very often, but I'm getting back at it. I have a few scheduled things to come out, so that's exciting. Woohoo! Cool, cool. All right, yeah, so we will see you over at the Discord and on the next live discussion. Bye! Bye, everyone!